laws against the Niger Delta. Fifteen that we know of. The Land Use Decree, the Petroleum Act of 1969 amended in 1999, the Exclusive uh, 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 Export Zone uh, Act Decree, the Native Ordinances, there are fifteen of them. The Osborne Law, or Land Law, or whatever, you know, all of these laws and militating against the development of the Niger Delta. These laws have enslaved the Niger Delta and enslaved the Niger Deltans. The first step is the abrogation of all of these laws so that the Niger Delta people can have increased participation or uh, 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 authority over what rightfully belongs to them. For example, why would you say that anywhere oil is found in the Niger Delta belongs to the government? But also in the northern part of this country, where there are oil, uh, mineral, oil mineral resources, when they find out that mineral, it belongs to the people who only pay royalties to the government, why enslave our land perpetually because of oil that God gave to us? We believe dealing with the problem is very simple. And when you deal with the problem of the Niger Delta, you are solving the problem of the nation. The government is a fraud, is a rape on the will of the people. How can you push a man to the wall and say the man should not respond? How can you tell a man, the, how can you sleep with a man's wife, rape his daughters, and you say the man should be smiling and shaking hands with you on the same table of brotherhood? This is wicked. We do not support this. And we are trenchantly and vehemently opposed to anything that will not give the Niger Delta people their peace. I have never been involved in bunkering because of the environment, but I support bunkering. The oil belongs to the people who are taking it, not the bandits in Abuja. It belongs to the people who are taking it. The person they call bunker, the bandits, the bunkers, the thieves, the oil thieves are the Yaraguas and his people in Abuja. Not these people, the owner, and owner cannot steal his own. How do you deal with the criminality? You deal with the criminality because in, in a way that you must cut off their source of supply of arms. How do you cut off the source of supply of those arms? You must cut off this you must cut off the trade by which they get those arms and that is bunkering bunkering is illegal bunkering they are using it now for purposes of criminality if it's used for the purpose of advancing the struggle i don't mind we are not mass murderers so the method used by al-qaeda cannot be used by us because we cannot also, uh, suicide bombing. Then we sleep bomb. Then we go to the marketplace or go to somewhere. The guilty one will die. The innocent one will die. The blood of the innocent, according to your belief, will cry and fight you in the spiritual realm. Our battle first is in the spiritual realm. Look, I fought the Nigerian state for 12 months. I lost only three people. Every day, sacrificial killing is going on in the Niger Delta. He openly destroyed our gay community. Attack took place in a place very far from our gay community. They went to Agay and attacked Agay and burned it down. Yaradua has committed war crime. The same crime committed by Obasigo. Obasigo was a total failure in his government. Corruption was widespread and endemic. No, nobody has been as corrupt as Obasigo government. And if Yaradua could not arrest a passenger, then he has no reason for trying anybody for corruption. Because Yaradua, a passenger, is the first person. A passenger flagrantly disobeyed the constitution that they call the constitution of Nigeria, their own constitution they wrote. Now, if you see this kind of government that now allows oil companies to come in and have a field day, that is an irresponsible government. So it is basically the fault of the Nigerian government, basically. 
because they should set standards and parameters within which these oil companies will operate. They should tell them that these are our terms. These are the terms under which you can operate in Nigeria. You must clean up the environment. You must put infrastructure in place in those communities. You must repair the, the air. You must conserve gas. You must do all of that. So they must set standards for these oil companies. That is where the Nigerian government has, has defaulted. That is where the Nigerian government has failed in its duty to protect the rights of Nigerians. And then you now have the easy collaborators with the oil companies. The government companies, they know how to give out handouts to those at the federal level. They know how to give out handouts to those in government. And so you now have this easy collaboration between these two sons against the people of the Niger Delta region. Uh, what has happened in Nigeria now? The attention of the federal government has been drawn to the plight of these areas. There has been debates in the National Assembly. The federal government themselves uh, have done a lot. You know, they have even come to the extent of having what you call a master plan to transform the entire Niger Delta uh, region. Apart from that, you have the Niger Delta Development uh, Commission, where uh, percentages of uh, money derived from uh, from uh, the resources uh, are made available to you know turn around the area for development of the area to develop its infrastructure of the area to build industries to build schools what we have found now is that uh, the so-called people that are you that you are calling militants are, are actually engaged in serious criminal activities because kidnapping is properly defined in the criminal code law of Nigeria as a crime, and uh, you know, the, and uh, what is happening now is that is not only uh, expatriates that are being kidnapped. In fact, majority of people being kidnapped uh, now are, do, are indigenous. Yaradua is confused about the region. Yaradua has no specific game plan to curtail the crisis. He's acting on whims and caprices, he's acting on impulses regarding the region. He doesn't have a clear plan and I pity him. I pity him because he inherited a region that was put in complete mess by Obas and Job. And so he has not come to grips with the region and the problems of the region. It is yet to see, we are yet to see his definite game plan, but he does not have one now to curtail the crisis.